Hi, it's Brad here with MDAMON Technologies. Today I'm going to give you a uh, quick high-level overview of Security Gateway and the features that will be available to you as a global administrator as well as features available to domain administrators and features available for end users as well. So on my screen here I have um, I'm actually logged into uh, Security Gateway as three separate users so that I can give you a good comparison of the different levels of access so this window that I'm showing here I'm logged in as a global administrator and then in this window I'm logged in as a domain administrator and then in, in this window I'm logged in as an end user notice end users have far fewer options available to them so for example under the global administrator, you will have access to uh, all of the uh, settings in Security Gateway for all domains and users. Under the domain admin access type, you'll have access to most of the administrative settings, uh, but specific to your domain. So we'll go over this in a little bit more detail here. So first of all, just to give you an idea of the, uh, of the uh, interface, this is the uh, dashboard. Again, we're logged in as a global administrator here. So you have access to your uh, traffic charts, mailbox charts, and so forth. Um, under the Setup Users menu, this is where you can go to configure a variety of things, such as uh, setting up accounts and uh, setting up domains, setting up user verification sources, configuring automatic domain creation and so forth. Also adding mail servers uh, that you will be protecting with Security Gateway, configuring archiving and quarantine settings and so forth. So for example, under domains and users, I have two domains here and I can add another domain by simply clicking on the new button and adding the information here. Each, each domain has a link on the right hand side to the users who are assigned to that domain. So I can click on this link right here, for example. And then I can see all of the users assigned to that particular domain. I can click on the new button here if I want to create a new user, as well as configure various settings for that particular user, give that user a password or assign that user administrative rights uh, and so forth. Now, Security Gateway can verify users against a user verification source, such as an Active Directory environment, an MDAMON mail server, an LDAP server, and so forth. So if an email message arrives for an otherwise unknown user, you can add a user verification source here, uh, and then uh, Security Gateway will query that verification source to see if the account exists, and if it does, uh, then the account will be uh, created uh, in Security Gateway. So this is a lot, this allows Security Gateway to automatically create users, but using this, the uh, automatic domain creation feature, Security Gateway can also create domains automatically by querying that same user verification source. Now, under the mail configuration setting uh, section, Security Gateway can be configured to filter mail for multiple mail servers, and then this is where you'll, you'll go to add those mail servers. Under domain mail servers, you can simply click on the new button here, put in a description, the host name or IP address of the mail server, the port that it's uh, listening on for SMTP traffic and other uh, parameters as well. You can set this mail server as a default mail server. So in other words, if uh, mail arrives uh, or is sent from a domain uh, that ha does not have a mail server assigned to it, then the default mail server will be used. Otherwise, you can assign uh, specific domains that will be using this particular mail server. Under the quarantine configuration here, you can decide as the global administrator what to do with messages that were considered uh, messages that are quarantined. You can hold them on the server or you can allow the mail server or client to uh, filter them and then optionally tag the message subject with a series of characters. So if you quarantine the messages on the server and have them held on the Security Gateway server, you can then configure these options down here to send users a quarantine summary email listing the contents of their, uh, of their quarantine folder. I have an example of that for you here, actually. So use this is... Uh, this this email right here is a uh, is the quarantine summary report that is sent out to each end user. That end user then has the ability to review these messages and then decide what to do with it. Release it from the quarantine, whitelist the sender, or mark it as spam or blacklist the sender. So this is the user quarantine. Administrators have a quarantine report email as well. 
And that this is what that looks like. So as the administrator, if uh, messages were uh, captured by uh, data leak prevention or uh, some other uh, something that requires administrative review, uh, you as the administrator will be able to go in and review those messages via the administrative uh, quarantine summary email and then release them accordingly um, as shown here. So that's uh, that's those are the quarantine settings in Security Gateway. There's also archiving and uh, you can configure it here by simply uh, checking this box to enable archiving and then configure your archive stores and you can also search your uh, archived messages. There's an advanced search as well so you can find archived messages pretty easily. Under the system section uh, if you have uh, uh, say for example a, a rather high traffic server and you'd like to improve performance you can you can offload certain uh, features and functions to different directories so for example if you have a different physical uh, hard drive and you want to map a drive letter to it then you can offload for example your logs to that directory or uh, your backups uh, your spam Bayesian learning spam and non spam folders and so forth so you can so you can use that to help improve uh, performance there's also a, a useful uh, versatile content filter that you can access via the uh, security menu here if you go to uh, filtering and then message content, you can create a uh, multiple content filter rules based on a variety of criteria. And you can assign them, If you, for example, if you are the global administrator, you can assign them on a per domain basis. Now, if you are a domain administrator, you will only have access to uh, create filters for your specific domain. So with the content filter, you would, can simply give it a name. And then you can add conditions for your rule based on who it's from, who it's to, uh, the content, subject, body, and so forth. So if the body contains or does not contain uh, certain characters. And you can add multiple conditions uh, for each content filter rule. And then under the action section, you can decide what to do with that message, such as discard the message, quarantine it, redirect it, or if you collect, if you select send as registered mail, you can then select the uh, R mail encryption, track and prove, and e sign uh, options as well. So a useful content filter that you can configure in a variety of different ways. There's also attachment filtering here. So with this, you can filter out attachments by type. You can manually enter in the file extension. So, you know, for example, executables or whatever you'd like to add here. If you use the links below, then you can block all attachments of a particular type. So all image files, for example. And that way, it will populate all of those different file extensions pertaining, say, for example, to image files without you having to manually uh, enter each one. And these will be blocked altogether. You can also choose which types of attachments you would like to uh, quarantine as well. So the same concepts apply. And you can configure exclusions at the bottom for messages from whitelisted senders, authenticated sessions, uh, and so forth. So these are all features that all global administrators will have access to, and then domain administrators will have access to them if they pertain to their specific uh, assigned domain. So as a global administrator, I can go in here and I can create a new domain. If I go back under Setup Users, Accounts, Domains, and Users, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set up a new, um, a new domain. I'm going to just call this domain2.com. And you can assign other parameters if you'd like to do so, uh, passwords and so forth. You can uh, determine how accounts for this domain will be uh, verified. And... Uh, decide which mail servers uh, this domain uh, will be using and then assign administrators to that domain as well. Uh, but the minimum that you'll need to do is to simply enter in the uh, domain name and click on, um, click on save and close. And then from here we can click on the number of users and then we can actually uh, add a user to this domain manually uh, here. So if I said for example user dot to or something like that at domain2.com. You can then enter other information accordingly, uh, real name, password if there's a password. You can optionally uh, assign administrative rights to this particular user. If, if you want them to be a domain administrator, select the appropriate domain in the menu at the bottom and then move it over to the right hand column and then click on uh, save and close. So that's how you add users. Now, as the domain administrator, uh, again, I'm logged in as a domain administrator over here in this window. 
The domain administrator has access to most of the same features that the global administrator does with a few exceptions and but only for that particular user's assigned domain. So uh, there, there are some things a domain administrator does not have access to and we can kind of compare to, uh, to see the difference. So on the left hand side here, for example, as a global administrator, you'll have access to Civ scripts. Uh, you, do not have you do not have access to the uh, high level Civ scripts as a uh, domain administrator, but you do have access to uh, everything else uh, that you see here. So there are a few differences between the uh, types of information you can access as a domain um, as a domain administrator. But a domain administrator can then go in to set up users and, and go to the accounts for their assigned domain to add users accordingly. They cannot go in here and add a new domain. That's available to the global uh, administrator only. So and also as far as reporting, uh, Global and domain administrators have access to a variety of different reports. Now, uh, for a global administrator, these reports will be for all domains, uh, and you will have the option to select additional domains in the drop-down menu. For domain administrators, these uh, charts and reports will be uh, will show data for your specific domain only, and so that includes uh, a breakdown of junk email, uh, messages, process, inbound and outbound, top recipients, and so forth. So this is all on a on a per domain basis. So for archiving, the uh, the the global administrator can configure archiving for all domains. And as you can see here, there's a drop down menu at the top right hand corner for a global administrator to uh, select the appropriate domain and then configure archiving accordingly. Now, for a domain administrator, which is this window I have here, you can still configure archiving, but you have a couple of choices. You can choose to use the globally, globally defined default settings for your domain, or you can use custom settings by selecting this option. And again, notice in the drop down menu, you only have access to your own domain. When you use the custom settings, then you can check this box to enable archiving for your domain, configure archive stores, and uh, can search archive messages and so forth. Uh, so those are the archiving features you have available as a as a uh, domain administrator. Also for your security settings, again these settings here are all uh, domain specific but you do have options for many of these screens to use the globally defined settings or to use your own custom settings for your uh, for your assigned uh, domain and also with logs and reports again um, you'll have access to the message logs and the uh, reports for your um, for your specific domain now for the end user so an end user does not have access to any of those administrative settings. They only have access to what you allow them access to. So, so end users will have access to settings for their specific account, uh, their landing page, their quarantine settings, uh, whitelist and blacklist. Now you as an administrator can choose whether or not to allow users to have access to these settings. Uh, so this feature may or may not be visible to the end user depending on how the administrator uh, configures the um, appropriate access rights. End users can also view their own quarantine. They can view the uh, message log for their account for inbound and outbound mail and then you know, determine you know, what happened with the message. Was it rejected? Was it delivered? And so forth. And they can also search their own message archive if you grant them access, uh, access to do so. So that's that's the uh, that's the basic high-level summary of the different varieties of access for uh, global domain administrators and for end users.